Hi and welcome to the first episode of a new series of videos. I'm not sure what I should call the new series, perhaps uh, DIY R&D. Uh, if you have a good suggestion, please leave it down in the comments later on. Uh, so this series is about uh, researching and um, getting a better understanding of everyday technology in order to uh, well incorporate it later on in new amazing DIY projects. So uh, right now I'm hacking a broken corded electric drill. Okay, so what you just saw there was me uh, taking measurements from uh, this uh, modified uh, drill. I wanted to see how much torque it could output and how much current it draw and at uh, what, what, what uh, voltage. Uh, so um, the thing is, I want to find out if it is a viable thing to uh, rebuild the uh, typical Series 1 motor in a power tool to a uh, permanent magnet DC motor. And the reason for that is that I would like to be able to use this this earth drill. You know, you drill holes in the ground to put uh, poles for a fence. Uh, it's, they're typic typically uh, gasoline powered, but there are electric versions as well. So this is a uh, uh, serious wound electric motor. It's geared down one to uh, 140. So, and it's like two horsepowers. So it's a very slow moving shaft here. And I would like to use this as a very powerful servo motor, like an ordinary radio controlled servo. Uh, and for that, I would like to be able to change the uh, direction of rotation just by switching the polarity uh, on the uh, cord going to the motor. And since, since it's a serious one motor, that won't work. But if I can rebuild it to a permanent magnet, motor, uh, that would be uh, the function of that motor to simply switch rotation by switching polarity. So uh, that was uh, this test today to find, to find that out. And as it turns out, it seems to be a fairly simple modification. So uh, this is how it looks. You can see the permanent magnets in there. So I simply cut the stator in half and replace that 15 millimeter of metal that I took away with these permanent magnets. So we have a north pole side and a south pole on the other side, of course. And here you can see the stator before I made the cut. So I marked out where to do the cut. It's 15 millimeters wide. And I attached the stator to a wooden plank first so that the laminations wouldn't fall apart when I made the cut. And here you can see that I glued the uh, magnets onto the, uh, the stator and they are facing the same direction. So for instance, this could be like both south poles pointing up and both north poles attaching to the uh, stator below. And uh, other than that, I just took away the electronic stuff in here and uh, uh, I simply apply power to these uh, brushes and the motor spins. And the motor is rated for 230 volts, but I'm running it at 30 volts just to get a reference value of torque and the uh, amp draw as the current draw. Uh, the thing is, <laughs> this machine is actually broken, and it broke in a ridiculous way. It has a hammer function, and a small steel ball keeps it from being in the hammer function or not. And that steel ball came loose and damaged the gears. So everything is in, like, in perfect condition except for the vital gearing here. It's good enough for just uh, uh, flipping it half a degree to, to find out what torque it has. But if you run it continuously, it really screams. Uh, and uh, the silly thing is to get the relevant reference value of this machine when it's uh, in unmodified state I <laughs> had to buy another one yay uh, since it's not like high quality it's not uh, a bargain uh, since you know it broke of a totally unnecessary reason but anyway I will uh, open up this box and uh, set up the uh, the uh, test again and uh, let's see how much torque the uh, original uh, serious wound motor can deliver at 30 volt. It's difficult to see, but the uh, machine is actually turning the stick slightly, and the current draw is 0 0.5 amps. It's a little bit difficult to read from this uh, old uh, transformer. And the uh, newton meter is showing uh, 0 0.1 newton over a half meter, so 0 0.05 newton meters. <laughs> so the uh, modified machine, it drew 2 amps at 26.5 volts and it delivered 0 0.3 newton meters of force uh, which equivalents of course uh, 0 0.50 newton meters per amp. The uh, unmodified original machine 
it drew 0.5 amps at 20, 28 volts and it delivered 0.05 newton meters which equivalents 0.1 newton meter per amp so the um, modified machine is uh, around 50 percent torqueier than the <laughs> or have 50 percent more torque than the uh, than the original so uh, uh, the strong magnets here really help and the reason for the uh, the modified machine to be able to consume so much more power is of course that the uh, the rotor windings are originally uh, hooked up to the stator windings in series uh, and it's, as it turns out this uh, the resistance just through the uh, uh, rotor is uh, 20 ohms approximately and the uh, the resistor when i measure on this machine which includes the uh, serious connection to the uh, stator windings is 60 ohms so it's uh, three times as much electrical resistance in the uh, serious wound machine uh, one good thing with uh, replacing the uh, stator windings with permanent magnets is of course that you gain a little bit of efficiency as well uh, since uh, there's a uh, loss in the uh, stator windings uh, another good thing is that, of course, the windings in the stator also generate a certain amount of heat over time. So you can simply push a little bit more amps through this modified machine without overheating, since it's simply less uh, heat produced in a machine with a uh, permanent magnet stator. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at the, um, the unloaded speed of the motor. So I will disconnect this. Uh, part here uh, and do the same thing with the original machine and see uh, how uh, what the RPM is of the uh, of the unloaded motor and here's a nice view of the uh, original machine with its uh, original stator winding and the modified version with the permanent magnet stator uh, and let me do the measurement of the resistance in the system so this is the uh, resistance simply of the uh, rotor in the modified machine it's like 18 ohms okay and the uh, unmodified one is yeah, closer to 60 it, it fluctuates slightly uh, and if I measure out here in the uh, plug it's a couple of ohms, ohms uh, more so that's how they look inside uh, let's uh, make the uh, speed measurements before I start I just want to make sure that the rotors spin freely and they do And the uh, RPM here of the modified version is uh, around 1600 RPM and the current draw is uh, hard to read out here, it's uh, really low and it should be of course since it's a 230 volt machine running on 30 volt. And the RPM of the uh, unmodified version here is uh, higher which you would expect since the mag magnetic field is weaker so it's like 2100 RPM. And the same thing here, I have a slight difficulty reading out the uh, amp, but it's low. Okay, so let's try to sum this up. Uh, yes, it is possible to uh, rebuild a uh, typical corded power tool from a series wound motor, a universal motor, to a permanent magnet DC motor. Uh, I would say that it was a simple hack. It didn't take me more than an hour to cut away the material in the stator needed for uh, the uh, permanent magnets to fit. And removing the winding was also a simple thing. Uh, I did gain what I wanted, uh, the possibility of changing the direction of rotation by switching polarity to the motor, uh, which does not work in this serious wound configuration. Uh, I also gained a significant amount of torque, at least at the slower voltages. And also, of course, I gained efficiency since I don't waste any energy to create this uh, static magnetic field uh, in the uh, stator of the original motor. Uh, the RPM did drop uh, because the magnetic field is stronger here. So it's uh, at a lower RPM, it creates a higher back voltage. So pushing back on the um, voltage going into the motor. Uh, so uh, that's, I think that's a pretty good thing because it means that, uh, well, since, since the output RPM is pretty high in these machines, even though they're geared down significantly, they're still like 3000 uh, RPM, uh, but I would prefer to have, have it lower with higher torque and this system here with the permanent magnets seems to uh, do just that. Uh, so all in all, it means that if it comes to it, it would seem likely that I can modify 
the uh, universal motor and this uh, heavy duty uh, electric motor with the gearbox so uh, that I could convert it to a, uh, a servo uh, using a simple H bridge to uh, control the direction of rotation. Okay, so that was the first episode in this new series. Uh, I have learned a couple of things today that I, and I hope that you have done that as well watching this video. Uh, I forgot to tell you that the magnets that I used, uh, I simply had these laying around at home. So I think that they are slightly oversized, but they are 50 millimeter long and it's 15 by 15 millimeter in square. The magnetization grade here is N48, so it's pretty pretty strong magnet. Uh, I think the temperature endurance of this is 80 degrees, so it's a low temperature magnet. Uh, if I would have ordered them specifically for this project, I would have ordered a, a magnet that was not that uh, broad here. I, don't, I think I'm wasting a lot of magnetic field just uh, out in the air here. But nevertheless, uh, a great power in this uh, stator. Okay, so now I'm going back to the inflatable car project and I'm doing modifications towards making it easier to handle the vehicle, like uh, storing it and transporting it. Uh, and of course I'm working with the, uh, with the brake system. Uh, but I will show you that in the episode regarding that project. Uh, stay tuned and I will see you next time.